before we start. I'm just going to check to see if my audio is up and running. We don't want to have a repeat of the first 30 seconds of yesterday's stream. Uh, so just bear with me here a sec. I'm just checking to see if the stream's actually started first before I can do an audio check. Well, um. Uh, there's a, it's an adverse, so I'll have to wait and see. But uh, hello, everyone, and welcome back to the GT Sport League here at Gavel Racing on this fine Sunday evening. We're here for the Group B qualifying, followed by the Group B race. And that's uh, what a way to start the video there. A spin from Cutlery Hands in his Subaru, giving him front suspension, aero damage, and aero damage to add to the mix. That's definitely going to compromise his next six or so minutes as he's got to do in, uh, in this lap pit and then another outlap. I'm going to see if my audio is working now. Yes, and I think it is working. Hello. Uh, you can hopefully hear me. So not the start that Cutlery Hands was hoping for here today. Round number nine here at the beautiful circuit of Brands Hatch. 2.45 miles long. 0.3 of those miles consist of the longest straight here at this track. I believe that's after turn four uh, in towards turn five of the straight that Wolfie is quickly approaching to your current championship leader. Nine corners only make up this circuit. Five of them uh, are in the Indy configuration which cuts off turn five and after uh, turns right at turn four rather than turns left. Here is the longest straight on this track I believe. Uh, four to six flat uh, Wolfie's uh, third sector split. This track has five sectors. Yeah, this, sorry, I just had to count again. This track has five sectors, interestingly. Um, I don't know why it's got five sectors. I've never actually known why. Uh, Wolfer, though, is approaching another one of them. Let's see what he can do on the medium compound of tyres. Making his way through turn eight. A few incidents from the race yesterday happening at that corner. Kyler Love is closely tucked up behind Wolfie here. Not enough for the slipstream effect, I believe. Uh, the slipstream ranging from about seven to six to eight tenths. Uh, as we are running the realistic setting. Up to the line though, it's Paul Wolfie. Let's see what time he can do. Goes into provisional pole, being the first driver to set a lap, and it's six and a half tenths clear of Kyler Love. Someone else to keep an eye out is for Topster 2710, who's returning to the GT Sport League here for this race at Brands Hatch and puts it on provisional pole on his returning debut. Uh, also joining the Ferrari 458 crew as uh, Ted actually beats that time with a 130 flat. With a uh, six and a half tenths clear on Topster, but crucially, uh, the only driver, I believe, to start on the soft compound tyres. Now, this is going to be interesting. It's the first time we've seen anyone fighting for the championship actually go for the softer compound. Uh, we've seen many people trying to pit early from the mediums. Sometimes it's worked, sometimes it hasn't. Uh, but this is the first time I believe Ted is trying something different. He's trying something new. Tire rules and regulations stating that you have to start the race on whatever tire you qualify on, which means whatever tire you enter quality on is the tire you will start the race on. New rule that we brought in for this season. Let's have a look at Ted's sector split. Tenth and a half down through the third sector. You can see the sector splits separated by the little da uh, dashed lines on the map in the top right hand corner as uh, Wolfie takes a little trip off the circuit down at turn seven. A few drivers uh, making that mistake yesterday. Uh, you can just see they're a bit too deep, missing the initial apex and uh, running wide onto the grass. Meanwhile, Ted going through that section now. Five tenths down on his time. He's probably going to come into the pits. Uh, let's see about uh, Topster though. He's not going to pit this lap. Kind of loves into the pits. Uh, Topster in the run up to the line. Keeps it nice and close to the wall on the right hand side. That uh, doesn't improve with a 30.8. Uh, Wolfie's fastest time, 30.7. I was going to say, why is that slower? Um, sorry, why is that quicker? He's behind it because Wolfie's uh, fastest, uh, sorry, Tobbs' fastest lap is a 30.6. Tom DeBomb improves on his time, goes up into 8th place. Only 9 drivers here tonight, unfortunately. Uh, a few people couldn't make it, the likes of Woody. Uh, if one of the championship contenders uh, unable to make it for tonight's race. Uh, it looks like Cutlery Hands is still on his outlap. This is why I was saying how much time he's lost. I said it'd take about six minutes, and if he crosses the line in 24 seconds, then I've got that bang on uh, during this 18-minute qualifying session. Uh, so Cutlery Hands in a tribute livery, this time out, uh, running a, an England flag on the roof of his Subaru, uh, his home country, his own track. 
home track to quite a few drivers here tonight. Tom De Bomb, Kyla Love and the scout Dan also sharing um, the same nationality, the same Union Jack flag you can see in there just above the car. On the, on the scout Dan's car, I actually forgot I put that on his car. Um, is a tenth down on his personal best. I think Tobster made a little mistake there. Menex Andils has gone off and there's a, a meter board uh, off as well. That could definitely affect the same driver's lap times if they use that meter board as a reference point. Let's have it on board, see what happened. He's dipped a wheel onto the grass on the left-hand side. That's caused his car to go steering off and out of control. Meanwhile, Tobster and the scout down are into the pits. Wolfie improves on his time and goes only a tenth behind Ted who's on the soft compound with tyres. Tom the Bomb jumps ND at one position, goes up into seventh place. And Tobster and Scott down back out on the medium compound tyres. That was close. Let's just, let's get an on-board. Let's get literally an on-board shot of Melek Sandals. You can see they're coming out the pits. Oh, oh that, that was dangerously close to, to a collision. Thankfully, I uh, don't know if the ghosting system uh, played a part in not uh, there being not a collision but uh, yeah it definitely was close uh, I think he just narrowly avoided um, Manic Sanders trying to go through turn one uh, would have been a bit of a shock for the Irish driver uh, but this grid separated or split by Irish and British drivers Tobster uh, the lone German here tonight Cut Rehans improves on his personal best it's good enough uh, for ninth place at the minute, uh, but points will be scored and uh, an advantage will be gained on those who aren't here tonight. Meanwhile, though, Ted is on provisional pole on the soft compound tyres, and that's not going to help him in his fastest lap attempt. Hobster with a mistake, uh, get, not getting in Ted's well, getting in Ted's way. Nothing he could really do about it. Dips a wheel into the grass, and you can see that Ted. I had nowhere to go. That is hugely unfortunate for Ted, who's going to dive into the pits for this lap. Bell on his attempt from the soft compound tyres. Can set another soft top compound tyre on. So that Merrick Sandals coming out the pit lane. Let's hope he has no dramas like he did when he was trying to do his lap. He's got someone closely behind him. I can't see who it is. It's uh, ND currently on a lap. He's just starting a lap actually. Melex Andrews moves uh, over to one side nicely. And lets his teammate go through. I believe they're teammates. Let's have a look and see if ND can improve. And he's tenth and a half down through the first sector. Uh, let's have a look at Wolfie's sector splits. He makes, makes his way through turn six in towards turn seven. Two corners that have caught uh, a lot of drivers and the best drivers out in recent history. Tim and Dutch are both making mistakes in yesterday's race. Wolfie's almost a second down in his time. He's probably probably going to uh, either bail this lap and start a new one or come into the pits. ND is just less than a tenth down on his personal best. Going through the third sector. I don't know why this track has so many sectors. It should only have three. Uh, maybe after turn three, turn five, no, after turn six, I think those should be the three sectors, uh, but Endy has gained a little bit of time, he's now two tenths up on his personal best, it's good enough for seventh place at least, and he finds some time through the final corner, eight minutes left to go in this qualifying session. Let's see where Endy can put his Lamborghini Topster. Moves up a position into second with a 30 flat. Uh, what about ND? Does improve by six and a half tens, but it's only good enough to gain him one position. Uh, but he's crucially only 200 behind his teammate, Manic Sanders. He's going to have some nice slipstream on this lap if he's able to keep it behind. But Topster has closed it with less than a ten, 300 behind Ted MC. And Ted's on the soft compound tyres. We should uh, expect to see some quick times from this man who's currently looks like he's in AI mode judging by the fact he's ghosting uh, might have some issues with his controller his wheel or whatever uh, but Wolfie your championship leader is 10th down on Tobster's time looks like he's setting himself up to go into the pits either that or he's paused the session I don't know if we have a lobby issue 
Uh, no, Wolfie comes into the pits. Um, kind of love getting a little bit wide through turn eight. It has uh, Tom the Bomb closely behind him in a in another UK sorry England themed livery on his McLaren 650S. Kind of love up to the line. What can he do? Uh, isn't going to improve. It's 3.1 seconds down on his time anyway it looks like Topster is on a flying lap can he knock head off provisional pole position not quite five and a half pence off of his personal best a 30.6 compared to his 30 flat as his fastest lap as things stand um Kyler Love is making his way through the second sector he might be into the pits at the end of this lap um Maddox Andrews I don't think he improved on his previous lap no he was a tenth off his personal best which was set on his first ever lap uh, 31 3 Ted is into the pits for another set of soft compound tyres Topster on the mediums he's done he's done really well actually to only be 300 behind Ted who is on the softs and is going purple he's a tenth up through the middle sector Cartery has sets a new personal best he closes down that gap to Tom the Bomb in eight and ninth place meanwhile we all eyes maintain our focus on Topster here in the Ferrari he's just improving five thousandths up on his personal best runs a little bit wide you can see the tyre marks on the grass as he's going to make his way around the final corner on the mediums he's less than a tenth behind Ted can he put his Ferrari 458 on provisional pole position on his debut? Not quite, he's <laughs> just a tenth and a half off of his personal best and will be going for. Uh, looks like he might come into the pits at the end of this lap actually with five minutes left to go. That's enough to go into the pits and set another lap time. Ted on an out lap, Wolfie on a flying lap, scout dance in the pits. Uh, Melix Andils is making his way through turn one. Andy making his way through turn one. Melix Andils following. Uh, what I was going to say is both of them, well, both of them now finding the gravel. You can see Andy was just, uh, just missing out, out, out on his personal best uh, for taking a trip off into the gravel to go build some sandcastles. Meanwhile, uh, I think Tobbs is going to be into the pits this lap. Put on a fresh set of tyres. It looks like Wolfie could be on a fresh set of tyres. And I start 34-6 as a competitive lap. Then we'll just have to have to wait and see. He's got Kyler Love uh, in front, close in front of him. Could be good for the slipstream. It's eight tenths off of his personal best. So it looks like this is going to be his penultimate lap here in this qualifying session with four minutes left to go there is still time to set a few laps tops is on a set of worn mediums someone's into the pits as well uh, is kind of love tops that follows on into the pits ted is purple through the second sector tops is into the pits wolf is going through turn one someone's off at turn one speaking of and he's off as well who is off at turn one? If only I can find. Oh my god, flicked through everyone. It is Tom the Bomb. Hopefully the replay feature goes back far enough. Uh, just far enough to see the McLaren go spearing off out of shot and behind uh, behind the little hill and uh, into the barrier. Picks up rear damage in the meantime. You can see here on board with Tobster's Ferrari making his way through the first couple of corners on his outlap though. Ted going purple. You can see the purple indicator on the left hand side. Uh, does he improve and extend his lead out in front in the qualifying session? He does, but only marginally by 5 thousandths of 130.016. Goes off at turn one, so he's going to get another lap in. He might not be able to come into the pits, though. I don't think there's time for that. Uh, Tops is on and out lap. Let's see what Wolfie can do. He's going to be the next person to come across the line. He's purple on the medium compound tyres. This is not good for Ted if he's to start this race on the mediums. He needs to be on pole and blast away with this one, to be honest. If he is to make this strategy work here tonight. Meanwhile, Wolfie's going to be making his way up to the line. Can he lock his teammate off pole position? 
not quite narrowly improves by a one hundredth of a 30.1 uh, moves within nine hundredths behind Tobster and a one and a half tenths behind Ted uh, has the scout dad behind him both in the qualifying session and on track uh, it's going to be interesting to see what the British driver can do the highest of the Brits British drivers in this qualifying session at his home Grand Prix one minute 45 left to go so we're about to see the final few laps Tom De Bob into the pits he's leaving us very late he needs to be out of the pits now perfect timing uh, so he's, he might just get this out lap in before coming uh, to set his fastest lap of the session but this is going to be Ted's going to have to do a new lap on these worn soft compound tyres after his mistake at turn one he's going to have to push like crazy on these tyres it's going to have to be the best lap he's ever done if he's to secure pole position because he's two he's got two quick drivers behind him who are in hot pursuit to try and take that one away from him tops that's improving is anyone else improving country hands is going to make his way up to the line he isn't improving uh, setting a 36 or a 37 let's see what wolfie can do around the penultimate corner of turn eight in towards turn nine the final corner hooks it up nicely doesn't run wide it'll uh, keep it close to the right hand side of the track the inside as close to the wall as possible up to the line though but it's not an improvement 1.2 seconds off the pace he might try and set himself up for another lap uh, uh, the scout down with a 131.6 that can't be right oh no it could be sorry he's one second behind Wolfie at the minute Wolfie's personal best though is a 130.1 so Dan has set a 131.1 uh, I don't know why it's not showing up on the right hand side Tobster actually improves and goes on pole position by just under two tenths on the medium compound tyres this is incredible pace from Tobster on his debut to put it both ahead of Ted and your championship leader Wolfie who's going to be doing his best to try and knock Tobster off provisional pole someone's gone off though at turn one that's Menex and Bill so that's going to be a minimum sixth place for him in this qualifying session the time moves up and trying to find the drivers who are crossing the line and he's the one who's crossing the line comes across in fifth place I think that's Tom, Tom the bomb behind who didn't make it on his outlap uh, let's try and find the next driver who's going to finish their final lap it's going to be Cutlery Hands currently in ninth place uh, it doesn't look like he's going to improve, improve on a 31.9 and no he won't so Cutlery Hands will be starting at the back of the grid unless anything drastic happens uh, Ted though on in second place the scout Dan also yet to uh, finish this qualifying session what can Wolfie do up to the line can he knock Ted off pole uh, top of pole position not quite uh, two tenths down in his time and it looks like the scout Dan has made a mistake somewhere in this lap as well uh, Kyla Love and Tobster are the only two drivers yet to set a uh, their final time uh, can Kyla knock Tobster off pole position no doesn't improve Tobster doesn't improve either but on his debut with the 129.8 it's good enough that Tobster will secure his first pole position after returning back to the league uh, Menex Andrews though is uh, yet to finish his final lap but after that mistake at turn one I don't see him improving on his personal best lap which was actually set on his first fast, uh, flying lap and will claim seventh place in the session so that's qualifying it for today's race Tobza has secured his first pole position and Ted will join him alongside on the front row uh, will be your championship leader starts in four, uh, third place with the scout down in fourth closely behind is going to be ND with Kyla Love in sixth Melix Andrews in seventh, Tom the Bomb in eighth, and Cutlery Hands will join him alongside in ninth place here for round number nine of the GT Sport League. 15 races in total. We've only got six after this. But here we go then. 15 corners, 35 laps. The engines are roaring as we build to five red lights, and it's lights out, and away we go. Menex Andrews off to a brilliant start. Cutlery Hands. Not the quickest of starts, but Ted on the soft compound tyres is going to have to make an impression. He tries going round the outside of Tobster in towards turn one, ND on the inside of a couple of cars as well. It's two by uh, two by two. Well, he's going side by side, not really too wide, uh, with his teammate Ted just giving Tobster a little bit of a nudge through turn one. 
as the cutlery hands tries to make his way round the outside to the inside of ND in towards turn three. Can he move the Subaru up a position from the back? He bet he can. And he's gained two positions in the first three corners. The biggest gainer so far in this race. The top star five of oh, top four story unchanged. It's Tobster who still leads the way but has a, a, a charging head. I think it's the fairest way to put it on a fresh set of soft compound tyres. Will be trying to make his way through the field. He pulls over to the left hand side of the track. Uh, can he go round the outside of Tobster? And that's a beautifully executed move on the grippier soft compound tyres. Tobster's now left vulnerable to Wolfie behind. Who's going to try and go round the outside and towards turn six? They're still going to go wheel to wheel as they make their way down the hill, but back up the hill and towards turn seven. Tobbs is able to maintain second place for now. There's a bit of a gap between Cutlery Hands and ND. And uh, that's someone off the track. Is that ND who's gone off at turn six? It's ND and Tom the Bomb, I think. Let's get a quick replay on board uh, with uh, ND and Tom the Bomb. He's going for a move down the inside. Gets it done quite nicely. Tom tries to fight this back. This contact, and that's not great for, from Tom the Bomb. That could be a potential penalty coming his way. Meanwhile, we look back up to the top of the field. Carla Love going to try to send them down the inside of the scout, down in towards turn one. Can he make this one stick to the inside? Uh, that's someone going off. That's Menex Andrews going off. Wolfie trying to make a move around the outside of Tobster in towards the 180 degree right hander of turn two. Uh, Carla securing fourth place just ahead of the scout down. He's not going to give this one up without a fight. Sends one to the inside, just taps Kyla's rear left tire. Uh, meanwhile, it looks like Wolvie was looking to send one on Tobster. Couldn't quite pull off a move. Dan Doe trying to pull off a move down the inside and towards turn four. Gets his turquoise white and red Ferrari ahead of the Manchester United themed Lamborghini, uh, who been, has had good form. Uh, it's definitely at Willow Springs in recent uh, four runs. Uh, good run in uh, the Red Bull ring as well. Meanwhile, Ted has a 1.2 second lead on the soft compound tyres. Crucially, Tobster and Wolfie behind on the mediums. Everyone else on the mediums. Ted, the only driver on the soft. And, uh, well, for his strategy to work, he needs to go. He just needs to pull out a big as, a, as big of a gap as he can to the cars behind. Uh, meanwhile, Tom the Bomb taking a very wide line through turn seven, costing him quite a lot of time going on to the gravel and running wide where we saw a few drivers yesterday make similar mistakes your race leader Tim also venturing off into the gravel at the same corner and that's your championship leader Wolfie907 the first mistake we've seen all season he's lost it down at turn one dipped a wheel onto the grass and that just goes to show how punishing this track can be for the best of drivers you can see his rear, t uh, his rear left tyre his front left tyre onto the grass and that's Wolfie off into the gravel and he's now down into sixth position down down to eighth position sorry he's behind ND 11.6 seconds behind Ted who I think might have a little bit of a smile on his face as he's 1.5 seconds clear of Tobster but crucially 11.8 seconds clear of his championship rival and his teammate Disappointing for them in constructors if it was to finish as it, as it is, but we've seen Wolfie's pace and I'm sure he's going to be able to quickly make his way back up through the field. He's already trying to make some light work of ND. He's going to go down the inside and towards turn five. Easy as you like, gets the move done. His confidence might be shattered slightly, uh, but he might see this more as a challenge, more determination to try and make his way through the field. He's got to overtake six cars in order to gain, regain the lead off the race, but he's got to find 12 seconds if he is to do so it's going to be interesting especially with ted's alternate strategy this track seems to have a curse on the championship leader and uh well we've we've seen it once before and it's happening again they say that lightning never strikes twice uh but it's certainly raining heavily on both championship leaders wolfie and played up to across both championships uh, but meanwhile, lap four of 35, and Ted's pulling out a two-second advantage to debut driver Tobster, currently in second place, but on the medium compound tyres, doing well uh, for that gap not to extend even higher. Uh, the tyre difference, I think, is about six, seven tenths, possibly, between the two compounds. And if you think about it, on lap four, with a gap at 2.2, 2.3, he's only losing about five, six tenths a lap, so he's just on that borderline for uh, the tyre difference which is good for his race 
because when he pits for the softs and the super softs later, Ted will have to use the mediums at some point. Uh, but that gap between Wolfie and Cutlery Hands now 1.4 seconds. Uh, he'll be trying his best to make his way through the field. At least it should hopefully provide us with some overtaking and a comeback drive. But uh, Wolfie's not, he's rarely been in this position. I don't think he's been in the position all season where he's been towards the back of the field. Uh, only seventh place. It could be a lot worse had we have uh, had we had more drivers here tonight. I think that makes sense. Uh, Dutchie making a very valid point in the chat. This track hates champions. Uh, Cryptek in the chat asking why is Wolfie seventh? Uh, you just missed it exactly a lap ago. Uh, well, uh, meanwhile, sorry, I'll get back onto that as uh, Kari Hans takes a very adventurous route through the exit of turn uh, final corner. Uh, not as dramatic as Clay Dutchie's incident yesterday uh, but is able to get it going in a straight line exactly a lap ago uh, Wolfie made a mistake at turn one very rare mistake uh, but dipped a wheel onto the grass on the left hand side that's then him spinning off into the gravel and uh, well gains another position due to Cutlery Hounds' mistake at the final corner uh, now up into sixth position Ted though has lost a lot of time 1.3 seconds to be exact. Tobsa is closing in within 9 tenths of your current second place man in the championship. And he's on the soft compound tyres. And if he's to win this race, he needs to push on those softs and gain, uh, gain uh, more, a, a quicker, better advantage. Uh, the gap's only 7 tenths after 5 laps. It needs to be close to 3.7 tenths, maybe 2.7 tenths. Because he's going to have to pit for mediums. Tobsa is going to be on those softs when that strategy call comes when it's time to come into the pits uh Wolfie though is currently 1.5 seconds behind Melix Andils I'll keep an eye on that gap meanwhile the gap out in front only five tenths between Tobster and Ted Tobster making his debut uh was so close uh to qualifying no he wasn't he actually qualified on pole position I was going to say he's close to qualifying on pole he put it on pole uh, beating out Ted, uh, but Ted was able to get the jump down at turn five, and uh, you can see it continues to lead this race. Uh, tire info: you can see Tobster on the mediums, Ted on the softs. Uh, both have very similar amounts of fuel. If anything, I think it's the Lamborghini of um, Kyla Love who's burnt the most fuel. Cutley Hands has actually got damaged somehow. I didn't think he hit the wall there when he made his mistake. Uh, let's have a look at the gap between Wolfie and Renick Sandals. It was 1.5. It's down 1.2, so he's only gained three tenths this lap, but the gap is crucially coming down as Renick Sandals picks up a five tenth penalty, has four tenths of it left to serve. Uh, the gap out in front, though, six tenths between Ted and Tobster. The scout down. 6.7, 6.8 seconds behind the front two. That just goes to show <clears throat> the pace that the front two drivers had uh, Dan battling closely with Kyla Love throughout the majority of this race meanwhile Wolfie's already closed down that gap two Melek Sandals in front six tenths now separating two Irish drivers one in a Ferrari the other in a Lamborghini Lamborghini uh, currently running in fourth and fifth place in this race uh, but it's a Ferrari 123 in a very familiar cars that we've seen throughout the course of this Group 4 part of the season. Uh, most diverse car class somehow manages to uh, have the least amount of diversity across the grid in terms of cars. Uh, the majority of them in both sides of the GT Sport League are in this car. The Ferrari 458 seems to be a pretty good car for these guys. The one that's been winning the races. And I'm surprised we didn't get other Group 4 cars, to be perfectly honest. Uh, we could see a slight position change here. Wolfie and Alexander was the battle for fifth place. Only two tenths separate them going down the straight in towards turn five. I believe it's called. Sterling's corner or is that turn seven? Uh, but not to worry, Melek Sanders is having to defend the inside line. Uh, seeing as Wolfie's going to try and make his way round the outside, it's a poor exit for Melek Sanders. 
Uh, he's maintaining fifth position for now. Puts the wheel onto the grass on the inside. Uh, keeps Wolfie's Ferrari behind for now. But for how much longer? Wolfie looks for a move to the inside. Isn't quite close enough to challenge for uh, the position. Max Anderson also has a three-tenth penalty, which he will have to serve in the next 28 laps. As uh, we finish lap seven, the start lap eight out of 35. Gap out in front is rather stabilizing it. Around six, seven tenths of a second. Here goes Wolfie though to the inside at turn two and gets the move done nicely. We'll just get a quick replay to confirm how we done the move to the inside late on the brakes. Uh, really nice move there from Wolfie. Gets his way up into fifth place. But I don't think it's going to be over yet. The straight line speed from Melek Sandals. Uh, and, well sorry, that was someone else's car. So to the inside, I was looking at someone down the straight uh, rather than battle for fifth place. The straight line speed, here we go now. Uh, before the Lamborghini might just get the little bit of a jump on the Ferrari but it looks like he could be saving fuel might have got a bad exit through turn four Wolfie runs a little bit wide you can see Malik Sandals taking a tighter line on the inside uh, I'm also going to have a look back at this battle for ninth place between Cutlery Hands and Tom the Bomb the two English themed cars one made in England the other one uh, founded and made in Japan and uh, there's contact between the two teammates either that or lag as uh, the Ferrari, uh, not the Ferrari, sorry, the McLaren uh, of Tom the Bomb drifting it more per se through turn five. Now uh, looked like made contact with his teammate as well. Wolfie's next challenge is to gain two seconds on Kyler Love, which uh, will see him up position into fourth. But it's not going to be an easy two seconds to gain as uh, Kyler's actually dropped 1.2 seconds behind the scout Dan. Meanwhile, Ted running a little bit wide through turn two could leave him vulnerable to a charging Tobs to the behind. So, uh, well, the one opportunity Ted could have to win this race, Tobs there might have other words about it. Um, is that someone changing positions? I thought I saw something flick on the leaderboard. I think Manic Sanders might have made a mistake. He did make a mistake. I was right. And did it, does he catch it? No, he doesn't. Loses the position to his teammate who narrowly avoids the stricken Lamborghini. Uh, but we turn our attention now back up to the top two. Topster has had a brilliant exit and he's going down the inside of Ted uh, who looks like he made a mistake there. That move just looked a bit too easy for, for Topster. Let's have a, a replay. On board with Ted, he's just gone too deep into the corner. And that's allowed Topster to send one to the inside get the move down up into the lead of the race Ted's going to try and fight this one back as hard as he can on those soft compound ties I don't know what he's going to do about the strategy does he go to super soft does he go to mediums it's going to be interesting to see what he does with the strategy but that two second cap has already been closed down by eight tenths it's now standing at 1.2 1.1 seconds between Wolfie and Kyler Love he's, to be honest though he's still 11.9 seconds behind Ted and Tobster so Wolfie is matching the race leaders and for him he needs to be gaining time after his mistake he was 11.9 behind and he continues to be around that 12 second mark behind the front two Ted is just dropping off Tobbs' pace a little bit here I don't know how much pace uh, how much practice Tobbs has actually done for this race he messaged me about an hour before the lights out extra driver on the grid Wolfie running a little bit wide to turn three shouldn't cost him too much time though uh, might get a 5-10 penalty but it looks like he's clear of any penalties coming his way uh, that might have been the scout down running a little bit wide kicking up kicking up a little bit of gravel on the outside of turn four that gap 9.6 seconds behind uh small splitting third and second place that's the gap that's Wol uh, wolfie's gonna have to clear in if he's to gain back on Ted and Tobster. Crucially though, Ted is on the soft compound tyres, remember. Uh, Wolfie though, will be on the quicker tyres later on in the race. He's already trying to set himself up for a move on Kyler Love in towards turn seven, in towards turn eight now. He isn't close enough to send one to the inside. We ride on board with the Irish driver in the Italian car. 
almost pushes Kyla Love through the exit. That's how much pace, how much confidence he has through the final corner. He's got a good run in. He's got a good run in towards turn one. He's not going to be close enough though to someone there. Maybe turn two might be his best overtaking opportunity. You just have to wait and see. He's got a good run. Does he send one to the outside? Kyla goes defensive to the inside, uh, kind of blocking Wolfie. Nothing bad or illegal. Uh, but just placing this car in all the right places uh, to, allow, uh, to allow Wolfie to stay behind. Uh, that's not a place you want to be placing the car. Off the track goes Kyla, runs a little bit wide, doesn't get a penalty. Uh, but leaves the door wide open for Wolfie to send one to the inside. And I have to say, that was a beautifully executed move. We're going to get a quick re replay. You can see that the door was open. It was a late move to the inside, but Wolfie made it work we pan out back to the action they're still going down the straight Kyla now has the inside line can Wolfie make this one work around the outside they're still going to go wheel to wheel but with the grip with the confidence with the pace Wolfie makes it work around the outside up into fourth place but it's cost him a second gap to the race leader top of the 2710 Ted MC as well closely behind him that's where Wolfie's fight is well that's where he's aiming to be fighting come lap 35 uh, but now has his next challenge of the scout down in front just under a second splitting the two as Ted is into the pits from the soft compound tyres not willing to take them any further than lap 11 it's going to be interesting to see what tyres Ted goes on to here he's putting in the fuel and it's on to the medium so in theory he should be faster than the cars around him because they're all on worn mediums I've actually just thought of something. I've actually just come up with inside my head the best strategy that surely might work. In theory, what if you started on the super softs, stretched out a gap, a big enough gap to come into the pits for fresh mediums, hope that your fresh mediums are quicker than everyone else's worn mediums, and then you can get pit for soft tyres towards the end and have on the fresher tyres. Maybe these guys will then be on... I don't know. It, it's, it, there's so many different strategies that you can do. But, you know, it, you, you never know if it's going to work until you try it. Uh, for example, Manuel and Finn in Willow Springs trying the three-stop. Pulling it off to absolute perfection. Uh, a little bit of contact though between the battle for second place. Uh, third place on the circuit as Ted is into the pits that uh, comes out in fifth place a few seconds behind this pack of cars tosses into the pits from the medium compound tyres uh, he's probably going to go into a set of softs Wolfie though is still behind Dan when he then come into the pits uh, Dan does that allows Wolfie to go up into the lead of the race after his mistake tops is in for a set of the soft compound tyres Comes out behind Kyla and 1.1 seconds ahead of Ted, who is currently second place in the championship and on the mediums. This is going to be interesting to see how this strategy works. Thank you to everyone who is currently watching. Meanwhile, Menix Andrews and Dan coming out fairly close to one another, but so close that there's a massive punt from Menix Andrews. Concedes the position for now, but then proceeds to send one to the inside. Uh, let's get a replay of that because that was uh, not sure what happened there. The onboard is down here, comes out of the pits, and then gets punted from behind. Alexander was trying to make his way through turn one. Not ideal for either driver. Dan luckily doesn't have damage, nor does Manix Sanders, who hasn't pitted in this race just yet. Uh, your front two, I believe, are the only drivers in the front, out of the front runners, who haven't made a pit stop yet and Tobster has already caught up to the back of both of them Ted as well he's only three and a half seconds off your race leader and on the mediums he's sort of keeping up with Tobster here but he's not he's not being blocked so he's finding it difficult to get past Maddox, uh, Kyle Love uh, currently running in second and third place it's going to allow Ted to make his strategy work because he's now on the mediums compared to Tops and Softs
Thomas are trying to look for a move, nowhere to go, went a little bit too deep in towards turn, uh, turn two, Manek Sanders is into the pits from the medium compound tyres. Pierre making a point in the chat saying that the pit exit is dangerous, but I, th I, I agree, but to agree to disagree is at the same time, but because obviously this, this game doesn't have pit exit penalties as F1 does, uh, I'm just going to cut this point short as uh, Tobster is looking to make a move on Kyle Love. Pulls over to the uh, inside, but then tucks back into the slipstream. Uh, doesn't look like he's got the pace going up the hill compared to the Lamborghini. But um, yeah, from that incident between Dan, it looked like Dan pulled out of the white line. Uh, when the drivers make their way through turn one, I'll get back to that. But if, if the drivers coming out of the pits keep over to the right-hand side, then I guess the driver behind or the driver going into turn one, it's kind of their responsibility in a way to take the wider approach through turn one or tuck him behind because there's not much the guy in the pit lane can do because he's not going to pull over to the left hand side he's not going to stop on the apex unless everyone goes through so if they keep it tight to the inside i'll do a demonstration with top to here as he's looking to make his way up a position to turn one potentially in the slipstream of kyle love uh, you'll see on the right hand side is the pit exit uh top is gaining so much that looks too easy does kyle have an issue He's letting Ted and Tops to go through. Ted's going to try and look for a move down the inside in towards turn one. Can he make this one work? Not quite. Tops goes to Benz until the inside on the soft compound tyres. Uh, Ted uh, up into P3 now after making the move on Kyle Love, who looked like he let, let them go on his worn medium tyres. Runs wide a little bit on the exit of turn two. It might cost him a few tenths as uh, Ted has a few tenths worth of penalties, four to be exact. Kyle actually picks up a one second penalty uh, for that incident. Uh, but we're almost, well, we're over a third of the way through the race, almost halfway through this race. Wolfie stayed out on those medium tyres, the ones that he started the race on. Uh, 1.6 seconds clear of Tobster and Ted behind who have both crucially pit. So it's going to be interesting to see how the strategy works. I've absolutely no idea. But it was interesting to note that Tobster on the mediums was keeping up with Ted on the softs. And it looks like the roles have been reversed here as Ted is keeping up with Tobster on the mediums when Tobbs is on the softs. Uh, you can see here someone in the pits, you can see that white line. As long as you keep it close to the inside, then it should be uh, safe enough for the driver coming through turn one to uh, go around the outside. Obviously not the racing line, but uh, that's where the pit exit throws you out of. Does Wolfie come into the pits? Yes, he does. That gap out in front was closing at a rapid rate of knots. Um, Meanwhile, Dan currently running in 12th place behind, 12 seconds behind Wolfie, but who is into the pits, that much Tobster back up into the lead of the race. Where is Wolfie going to fare out? He's pressing in the field. Uh, he's just being released now. He puts on the soft compound tyres and comes out just behind MD in 6th place. Uh, Ted, though, now out of the slipstream window. Tobster on those soft tyres will be trying to push Pull out a gap. Kyle Love taking an adventurous line through turn three, off onto the grass. Um, 3.6 seconds behind Ted, quite a little bit ahead of Dan, and uh, MD is going to have a charging Wolfie on the back of his bumper. Pretty shortly, I'd imagine. No fresh set of soft tyres. That gap out in front is now open to 1.6 seconds. Topster has got some serious pace on those soft compound tyres, he could be one to challenge for possibly the championship. Who knows what, we are over halfway through the race, uh, through the season, sorry. So it's definitely going to be uh, some some challenge if, he's, if he does race in the future races, that is. Uh, but that's, that two second gap has been absolutely annihilated by Wolfie. See uh, marker boards being knocked over on the right hand side. Look at the grip on the tyres, look at the confidence he has going through the final sector. Someone's into the pits, I believe that is Kyler Love making his first stop. ND runs wide and that allows Wolfie to slip one down the inside. And that's an extra position up into fourth place. Uh, an extra position gained as Kyler's into the pits. We're at the halfway stage of this race, lap 17 out of 35. Uh, almost at the halfway stage, technically, uh, but near enough. 
halfway through this race. Uh, we've been racing for 25 and a half minutes as things stand. As you can see in the bottom left hand corner, Tobbs is setting the fastest lap of the race. And we will be picking up an extra point in the championship if he's going to be here as a full time driver. Three seconds now ahead of Ted behind on those medium tyres. We're looking to try and close that gap down as quickly as he can. He might be in slightly earlier for the super soft tyres. We'll just have to wait and see. Walty though has to close down a 2.5 second gap to the scout down. Has gone three and a half tenths purple through the fourth sector. Gaps are starting to open out a little bit across the grid. Uh, but I'm sure this one's going to be closing fairly shortly as Wolby's fresh soft tyres compared to Dan's uh, slightly older soft compound tyres. It's definitely going to be a difference between the two sets. MDs into the pits from the mediums. I'd imagine he goes into a set of softs. Uh, Wolby sets the fastest lap of the race with a 1 minute 29.307. 16 seconds behind race leader Tobster, your championship leader. Could this be the first race where he doesn't win uh, or finish on the podium potentially? Currently that position is occupied by the scout down. We'll just have to wait and see. Endy comes out of the pits in seventh place. Uh, let's actually get an on-board lap with Wolfie in his pursuit to the scout down as he's going purple through the second sector. As they make their way down the straight in the run down towards turn five, the longest straight here at Brands Hatch uh, actually counts as a sector. Uh, where Wolfie has lost a little bit of time, probably in the result of a bad exit through turn four. Meanwhile, as they make their way through turn six, a little bit cautious there, but uses up all the track on the left-hand side. You don't want to run too wide, otherwise you'll find yourself on the gravel, breaking at that meter board on the right-hand side, cutting as much of the curb on the inside, without going onto the grass on the left. That was really close with Peter for Wolfie's tyres. Using the curb on the right-hand side, using the maximum amount this track has to offer before breaking up this meter board for the final corner. Hooking up, hooking it up tightly on the inside before going out wide on the outside, uh, tucking into Dan's slipstream in the run down towards turn one. Does he set a new fastest lap of the race? Yes, he does. A 29.2. Uh, slightly quicker than his previous best, and that has closed that gap down quite significantly to Dan in front. Both drivers in the Ferrari. Looked like Wolfie was going to send one to the inside. Wasn't close enough though. Let's go for the move. And I'm just questioning whether Ted's made a mistake or if Tobbs just has insane pace. It looks like Ted has made a mistake. His last lap was a 34-6. I'm not sure what's going on there. Uh, but what's happening here is Wolfie's pulling over to the left-hand side of the track to go try and go around the outside of the scout down it's going to be down to straight line speed but both being in the same car no one's going to have uh, a, a significant advantage will be those going to try a beautiful switchback move will be at the inside for turn six if he can put it off down is later on the brakes maintains third position for now good racing from these two down on the older sod compound ties uh, just holding up briefly enough for ted and Tobster to pull away from these guys running in third and fourth place respectively as a, we see almost see an end to lap 19 of 35 about to start lap 20 in this race down defending the inside line to Wolfie's going to try and go around the outside a little bit of contact through the final corner uh, but how much can Dan keep Wolfie behind for he's going to have the inside line in towards turn one can Wolfie hold this one round the outside and use the grip on those fresher soft compound tyres to his advantage? He's got the move done, down at turn one, and uh, makes his way onto the podium. Has a gap to close, 6.9 seconds to his teammate Ted, running in second place, who's 10.5 seconds behind your race leader, Tobs to Asting Stan, on his return to the GT Sport League.
that gap has already opened up to a second to down behind. Not sure how much he can fight it for much longer. Tom the bomb on back of Kyle Lowe and a fresher set of soft compound tyres. They might not be fresher, but they are in better condition, judging by the tyre wear. Uh, but the gaps have opened up quite a bit across the grid. This battle for fifth place is our closest battle on the circuit. Five for six tenths separating Kyla and Tom the Bomb. Lamborghini versus McLaren. Uh, what a legendary fight that would be. Let's just wait and see. Who comes out in top on top? Sorry, in this battle, and kind of manages to hold. Uh, was able to hold it after making a mistake at the final corner. That could allow Tom the Bomb to capitalise and maybe send one to the inside, in towards turn one. He's going to look for it. He cuts the corner, and that unsettles the rear of the McLaren, and he's sent off into a, a rather aggressive spin there. Uh, let's have a replay on board with uh, Tom the Bomb. Uh, just to see exactly what happened from another point of view. Gets onto the curb, onto the gravel. And, uh, well, never looked like he was in control throughout that spin. Meanwhile, the gap out in front has closed down to 3.6 seconds between Ted and his teammate Wolfie. on the mediums and Wolfie on the softs uh, it relies on for Ted's strategy to work he needs to stay ahead of Wolfie when he pits for the super soft that's the way his strategy is effectively going to work he can't allow um, he can't allow his teammate basically to overtake him while he's on the mediums and Wolfie's on the softs the bomb now down to eighth place after that mistake in turn at turn one Wolfie is closing the gap on his teammate his last lap was a 30.1 the scout down running very wide through turn three and it's a 31.7 for Ted at 1.4 seconds quicker was Wolfie on that last lap alone and it's definitely closing the gap to his teammate thank you and hello to everyone who is currently watching the stream. The first time that Wolfie has not been leading the majority of this race. But he's making quite an impression as he's closing the gap at a rapid rate of knots to his teammates. Ted though just needs to stay ahead of him as long as he can on those medium tyres before he pits for a set of super soft tyres. That way they're going to be on the same tyre and it's going to be down to who has the quicker pace around this circuit. The penultimate race in Group 4 next week will be the final race on Group 4 at the Nürburgring before uh, venturing off into the GT3 cars. Wolfgang is running a little bit wide through Turn 1 but still is able to gain on Ted in front. You can see how much he's close in on half the, uh, this lap alone on his teammate. We actually have a battle for sixth place between Kyler Love and ND. And he's been able to close down that gap to his uh, fellow Lamborghini driver. Uh, not teammates though. ND currently teammates with Phoenix Angles. Currently running in eighth place. Let's see what he can do on the Manchester United themed Lamborghini who uh, parks the car in the middle of the circuit. Makes it awkward. For ND to either choose the inside or the outside. He's able to uh, stay ahead of ND for now, but for how much longer? As uh, they make their way on the, through the exit to turn three. It'd be a good race for ND if he's able to get ahead of Kyler Love in this one. He hasn't got the best of exits through turn five. Tom the Bomb pressing on a full tank of fuel onto a set of super soft tyres. Maybe a bit too much fuel as there's only 13 
laps to go. Full fuel is about 22, I think. Uh, 22 or 20. But uh, let's have a look at this battle back out in front. The gap is so... It's come down so quickly between these two. Are we going to see team orders? Uh, I don't I think we will. Because Ted has to stay ahead for his strategy to work. He might pit soon for the soft compound. Uh, super soft uh, compound. The purple stretch tyres. Just to maintain his gap. To Wolfie behind. Who's going to have the quicker tyres at this stage of the race. Ted defends the inside line. In towards turn four. He parks it on the, ins on the apex. Beautiful uh, defending from Ted. He's gonna, he sacrifices his run, but I think uh, the blocking, his uh, strategical placement of the car has allowed Wolfie not to get uh, the switchback move. Stays ahead through the down, down the straight, in towards turn five. There's contact between the two. Uh, similar scenes to what happened at Interlagos this time. It's Wolfie hitting the back of Ted, rather than Ted hitting the back of Wolfie down at turn six. Uh, turn five, sorry. That could have ended in a catastrophe for those two could have come off a lot worse. Uh, we have a look back at the start of the fifth place between Kyla and MD. Uh, Kyla, I think, has got just an advantage through uh, down the straight to uh, maintain ahead as they make their way through turn five. Someone made a mistake down at turn one. Uh, I believe that's Tom the Bomb. Let's just have another look to see if it was. Uh, does he want run wide and exit? Yes, he does. Gets into the gravel and uh, saves it nicely. Meanwhile, back up to the lead of this, uh, sorry, second place in the race. Tops has pulled out an 18 second advantage on the set of soft compound tyres. Uh, Ted stays ahead of his teammates for now, going through turn one into two. MD, though, is closing on the back of Kyle Love. So we've got two, two closely contested battles on track one for second, one for fifth. Two Lamborghinis and two Ferraris. Which one, though, is going to come out on top in their personal battle? Andy trying to set himself up for a move in towards turn two. Has a good run. He pulls over to the left-hand side of the screen, right-hand side of the track. Goes down the inside towards turn two. He's left it eight on the brakes. He's gone too deep. Uh, but with the wide line, we'll get good traction on exit. Good momentum. He gets the move done up into fifth place. Meanwhile, Ted is able to keep ahead of his teammate. Uh, going down the straight and towards turn five. Less than uh, two tenths separating those two. Uh, Andy's just been able to get uh, some advantage on Kyla Love. The gap now six tenths between the two Lamborghini drivers. The battle for fifth place. Ted's ran wide and that's allowed his teammate to slip through up into second place. And that's unfortunate for Ted though. You can see him on the grass on the exit of turn five. A mistake that so many drivers have made uh, both today and yesterday if you're watching this live, the Tobster, your race leader, is into the pits. Ted follows him in from the medium top, uh, tires. Maybe a smart de a decision for Ted to pit. Uh, releases Wolfie into the lead of the race. The scout dad also due into the pits. Uh, ND is able to gain a one second advantage on Kyla behind. Tobster's in and out of the pits uh, quicker than you can say macaroni cheese. And is onto a set of soft comp, uh, super soft set of tyres. Ted also in for the Super Softs. Comes out 10 seconds behind Wol uh, Tobster, sorry. And 19 seconds behind Wolfie. I'd imagine Wolfie being to the pits at the end of this lap just to minimise the time lost on Ted's fresh Super Soft tyres. And for Ted to get the undercut, he needs to push like crazy on those, so uh, on those Super Soft tyres. The quickest of the three sets, but also the one that degrades the quickest. Wolfie's fuel light is on, indicating about a lap, but to two laps of fuel remaining in the tank. He's been on those soft compound tyres for uh, the majority of this race, I think lap 15, picks up a five tenth penalty, that could be crucial. Uh, in the end of this race and makes a mistake. Another one here tonight. Runs wide on the exit of turn eight. The second major mistake we've seen from the championship leader. Does he decide to come into the pits? He serves a tenth of his penalty. He's going to serve all of his penalty as he comes into the pits. That could be crucial though. As of that five tenths lost going into the pits might be enough that Ted needs to gain uh, gain the position and jump his teammate. Hobster goes through and by up in towards 
uh, the lead of the race and towards turn one. Here goes Tedno around the final corner. Wolby's car has been released, whereas Ted, though, this is going to be close between the two teammates. Wolby's making his way on pit exit. Has Ted got the jump? You bet he has around the outside and towards turn one. And the undercut has worked wonders for Ted. He's now into second place ahead of his teammates, ahead of his championship rival, who also has an extra points at this stage of the race. He does have the fastest lap, but Ted is going purple. Tops is going even more purple, four and a half tenths up on the fastest lap so far set by third place man Wolfie 907 who is your championship leader running a third place in his quest to uh, come back through the field after his mistake down at turn five I think uh, was where he made his mistake I'm not quite sure but he's going to try and get the move done on his teammate to the outside of turn five not close enough he's going to try the switchback move he tried earlier on in the race uh, doesn't have the momentum to get past his teammates. Uh, Ted, though, needs to keep it on the track. This needs to be the quickest, most consistent race that Ted has ever done. If he's to keep his teammate behind, cuts the corner slightly. That is a 5 10 penalty for the Irishman. This is our saying how consistent he needs to be. This needs to be quality lap after quality lap, uh, but the most consistent quality laps you've ever seen. Moves over slightly to the right hand side before pulling it back over to the racing line. Wolfie slightly grippier and fresher tyres are going to come into place uh, sooner or later as a Ted pulls over to the right hand side to defend the inside line. Uh, Wolfie isn't close enough to go for a move but there, there's a little bit of ghosting and that's Ted off. He's able to make, uh, keep it on the track. There might have been contact uh, due to the ghosting system but he's going to try and defend the inside line to his teammate who's going to try and go around the outside, tucks back in behind for now, maintains third and second place between the two teammates. Uh, losing time to Tobster, to 12.5 seconds, separating your race leader between the top two, fighting for points in the podium position uh, for Ted's championship fight to keep it alive. He needs to gain, uh, or stay ahead and keep this second place, but I don't know how much longer it's going to last because Wolfie is on a charge. He pulls over to the left-hand side of the track. He's alongside his teammate, but both in the Ferrari. Both going to have the same straight line speed advantage going in towards turn five. Can he hold this one down the outside? Is he going to try his traditional switchback move? Uh, looks like he tries it. Uh, just gets slightly blocked by Ted, who parks his car in all the right places in order to keep his teammate firmly behind. And uh, the Ted is not going to give this one up without a fight. This could be the biggest fight that Ted is ever going to deal with in this championship so far. It's certainly the biggest race he's having in out of the, uh, the previous eight that we've done. Lap 28 out of 35, Start about to start lap 29 of 35, can Ted keep him behind for six, seven more laps? We'll just have to wait and see if he's able to do it. It's definitely going to be a tough ask from the Irishman, but he was able to qualify ahead of his teammates. Uh, let's see if he can finish the race uh, ahead of him as well. There are blue flags just in front, it's Cutlery Hands in the Subaru who's making his way through turn two. They'll be waved when these guys catch up to the back of him. And he's into the pits from the soft compound tyres. That could promote Kyla Love up uh, position. Uh, you can see the marshals waving the blue flags. Tobster has got the fastest lap of the race as things stand. We'll be picking up an extra point. Kyla goes through past Endy in towards turn one. Uh, meanwhile, we focus our attention back to the battle for third, uh, second place, sorry. Ted has been on uh, four of those five pence. Uh, one of the penalties he's had to his name and uh, has a 5 tenth advantage ahead of his teammate and uh, the more they fight the more their soft super soft tyres are going to be wearing meanwhile we have a battle for seventh place here between Manny Sanders and Tom the Bomb going in towards turn one the McLaren's gone deep could allow the Lamborghini to capitalize on the right hand side of the track to the inside and towards turn two can he get the move done can Tom hold this one round the outside there's a little bit of contact Manix Andrews gets the move done up into 7th place and if he's to gain 17 seconds on MD who's got a fresh set of super soft tyres on it's definitely going to be tough for him to pull that one off meanwhile only 2 tenths separating your 2 teammates, 2 brothers, 2 championship rivals here at Brands Hatch Tez left the door open to the inside, they're going to go wheel to wheel up to the line that would have been a photo finish, I think they were identical crossing the line but Wolfie gets the move done down the inside. Can Ted try the switch back? No, he can't. And that could be uh, Wolfie's keeping his championship, or extending his championship gap. The cut through hands gets out of the way nicely. Ted 
Ted, though, he's not going to give this one up. I can guarantee you that. He will be pushing as hard as he can to try and close in down onto the back of his teammate. Six, five tenths between the two now. You just have that feeling that Wolfie might pull away from this one. It looks like he's had more pace. The pace that he's been showing all season long. Going through turn five. It's not over until the, 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 the man or the woman at the end waves the checkered flag and the drivers cross the finishing line. There's still plenty of time left for a mistake. Uh, meanwhile, Tom the Bomb is uh, stuck behind Max and was defending uh, beautifully in towards turn one and two, keeping his Lamborghini ahead on the fresher set of super soft tyres. Uh, Tom the Bomb is actually improving on his personal best at this stage of the race. The gap though is opening up between Ted and Wolfie, six, seven tenths now between the two. Uh, that gap is closing, uh, closing, sorry. So they're opening just outside of the slipstream range, similarly between Manex Andals and Tom the Bomb, eight, nine tenths between those two. Dan running a pretty quiet race in fourth place. Uh, has Kyler Love, 21 seconds behind him. That gap though has opened up to a second between Wolfie and Ted. Wolfie's actually setting a personal best sector one on a lap 31 of 35. Five laps left to go. Thompson though has had an absolutely commanding race here. He's got the fastest lap as well with a 28-7. Leading this race by just under 13 seconds. Absolutely storming stuff from him. But I believe this is now our closest battle on track for seventh place. I will keep an eye on the battle for second, uh, which, uh, go, which are well, the drivers making their way through turn six into seven now. Max Andrews and Tom the Bomb though have to negotiate turn one. Uh, Tom the Bomb's got a good run on the Lamborghini. Does he send one to the inside? Not quite. And uh, interesting lines being taken through turn two. I don't think Tom knew whether to go back to the outside or keep it in on the inside. He's lost three tenths through the first sector alone in his pursuit for seventh place. So there's some crucial points and in his individual championship fight for those guys around him. That gap now has opened up to two seconds between Wolfie and Ted. And Alexander, so five tenths clear of Tom the Bomb battle for seventh place. Manex Andals though still has three tenths of a time penalty which is yet to be served. Let's see if he can stay ahead as they make their way through the fourth sector into the fifth one. They'll start down the start finish straight to start lap 32 of 35. That gap is uh, 1.8 seconds sorry, between Wolfie and Ted. Uh, while there aren't many battles, let's have an onboard lap of your race leader and uh, debut driver, uh, Tobster. He was making his way down, down through turn one, sorry. But keeping it nice and close to the inside curb for using all the track and the exit curb on the left hand side braking under the Palmer Sports sign before bringing it over to the inside getting on the power as soon as possible using the outside curb to his advantage for braking just as the curb starts on the right hand side using all the curb and natural turf available on the outside totally legal and I will gain you time if you can pull it off uh, awkward corner turn four uh, late apex to get the maximum speed uh, you need down the back straight, the longest straight on the on the track. You can see, if, well you can hear so that Ferrari engine working away before braking and turning in at the, uh, the one meter board on the left hand side using the curb on exit through turn five in towards turn six, a tricky corner. You want to take as much curb on the inside, much curb on the outside without going onto the grass or the gravel respectively. Uh, breaking up that meter board on the right hand side, going as over as much of the curb as you can. 
uh, before missing the metre board that's almost on the on the racing line uh, before using all the curb and track available to keeping it tight to the inside going out wide on the outsides uh, to get used to the track to its maximum gain the maximum speed uh, before going into the final corner taking a sort of wide-ish line before cutting it back over to the inside of the track to uh, limit the distance you take in towards turn one and that is a lap on board with Tobster 2710 who starts his penultimate lap of the race meanwhile the gap between Tom De Bomb and Melix Sanders has opened up to 1.7 seconds I think Melix might have made a mistake has he got damage he doesn't have damage uh, possibly an issue that gap has opened up quite significantly in that last lap another gap that's opened up to a substantial amount is the gap between Wolfie and Ted 3.5 seconds between those two not as much as the 14.1 second gap that Tobster has to Wolfie behind. Let's talk a little bit about... I mean, uh, this... Uh, what do you guys think of Brands Hatch actually as a circuit? Is it the best British uh, track in the UK? Or do you think tracks like Silverstone, Donington, do you think they're better than Brands Hatch? Let me know on your top British tracks and which ones do you think deserve to be in GT Sports? I think, I think what would make GT7 as well a really good game is if they add new tracks. That's the problem, I think, with the Gran Turismo franchise. They don't add new tracks, or, or more new tracks, but instead they have... You, you think of games like Project Cars 2 and they have so many good tracks, you think of a set of course, yes, yeah, yes, they have limited tracks, but they have good tracks. I think the problem with the GT franchise is they have too many of the same tracks. They have, there's 82 tracks in, in this game, but when you think about it, you've got Lagamagiyo, you've got Lagamagiyo backwards, you've got Lagamagiyo um, west, you've got west backwards, you've got east, you've got east backwards, you've got centre, you've got centre backwards. Then you have like the four or five Blooming Speedways, there's six Tokyo Expressways, there's countless versions of Song Kwa, um, six Sardinias as well. That's what I think is the problem with this game, and I think it needs more tracks. Um, but hey ho, so that's just a little point that I'd like to bring up at the end of this race, seeing as the, uh, the gaps have opened up throughout the field. Uh, but the cameras and all the eyes must now be paid uh, shone across this guy here, Topster, on his returning debut to the GT Sport Championship. Uh, currently in first position, didn't qualify on pole, but I no, actually did qualify on pole position, sorry. Uh, led majority of the race after getting past Ted and on his return he wins here at Brian's Hatch and takes home his first win of the season first win in his first race back the first race where this guy hasn't won a race this season but will come across the line in second place and will extend his lead at the top of the championship to his teammate Ted behind who finishes on the podium in third place someone who's had a quiet race but a consistent race the scout dan will come across the line in fourth place uh, drifts across the line for extra st style points sorry about that <laughs> uh, kyla left running in fifth place was able to defend off nd uh, before getting back past in the latest latter stages of this race and will come across the line in fifth place ahead of one of his rivals going off in style uh, meanwhile, Kyler Love will finish uh, six seconds behind in sixth place. Tom the Bomb uh, in a closely contested, contested fight with Melix Andos here. This might not be over yet as uh, they make their way through the final corner. It's going to have to require a mistake from Tom if Melix is to get this one. Uh, but it looks like Tom the Bomb is going to come across the line in seventh place. Melix Andos in eighth and Cartier Hands has already finished his race in ninth place a lap down. But uh, if, for, for once... Uh, well, here is your start to a finishing grief, uh, I should say. Topster wins the race. And, uh, I said this yesterday, and I'm glad I can say it today. You have a new helmet and a new suit and a new name taking the top step off the podium. It's Topster 2710 
who takes his first win of the season. And uh, Ted and Wolfie rounding out your top three. Tubbs to take home maximum points with the fastest lap as well. But to run you through your grid after your top three, the scout Dan finishes in fourth place, followed by Kyler, ND, Tom the Bomb in sixth, uh, fifth, sixth, and seventh. Melix Landers in eighth, and Cartley Hands rounding up the grid in ninth place. I hope you enjoyed this one as much as I have. Uh, stay tuned next week for the Nürburgring GP, uh, where well, I might not be there to miss that race. The final race in Group 4 before venturing off into the unknown for Group 3. I hope you guys have enjoyed watching, and I'll see you next time, next week, potentially, for the final race. Goodbye.